for those returning and for those just joining us. This is Section 3 of the 2015 to 2019 General Class Question Pool, presented on behalf of the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club located in Illinois. If you're just joining us, I would remind you that there are two sections prior to this one that will also contain the general class question pool questions, and there will be several other videos after this one. First off today, G2C, CW Operating Procedures and Procedural Signals, Q Signals and Common Abbreviations, Full Break In. G2C01, which of the following describes full break-in telegraphy? QSK. A. Braking stations send the Morse code PRO sign BK. B. Automatic keyers are used to send Morse code instead of hand keys. C. An operator must activate a manual send-receive switch before and after every transmission. Or D. Transmitting stations can receive between code characters and elements. The correct answer is D. Transmitting stations can receive between code characters and elements. G2C02. What should you do if a CW station sends QRS? A. Send slower. B. Change frequency. C. Increase your power. Or D. Repeat everything twice. Correct answer is A. Send slower. G2. C03. What does it mean when a CW operator sends KN at the end of a transmission? A. Listening for novice stations. B. Operating full break in. C. Listening only for a specific station or stations. Or D. Closing station now. Correct answer is C. Listening only for a specific station or stations. G2C04. What does the Q signal, QRL, mean? A. Will you keep the frequency clear? B. Are you operating full break-in or can you operate full break-in? C. Are you listening only for a specific station? Or D. Are you busy or is this frequency in use? Correct answer is D. Are you busy or is this, or this frequency in use? G2C05. What is the best speed to use when answering a CQ in Morse code? A. The fastest speed at which you are comfortable copying. B. The speed at which the CQ was sent. C. A slow speed until contact is established. Or D. At the standard calling speed of 5 words per minute. Correct answer is B. The speed at which the CQ was sent. G2C06. What does the term zero beat mean in CW operation? A. Matching the speed of the transmitting station. B. Operating split to avoid interference on frequency. C. Sending without error. D. Matching your transmit frequency to the frequency of a received signal. Correct answer is D. Matching your transmit frequency to the frequency of a received signal. G2C07. When sending CW, what does C mean when added to the RST report? A. Chirpy or unstable signal. B. Report was read from an S meter rather than estimated. C. 100% copy. Or D. Key clicks. Correct answer is A. Chirpy or unstable signal. G2C08. What pro sign is sent to indicate the end of a formal message when using CW? A. SK. B. BK. C. AR or D K N. Correct answer is C A R. G two C zero nine. What does the Q signal Q S L mean? A send slower. B we have already confirmed by card. C I acknowledge receipt. Or D we have worked before. The correct answer is C I acknowledge receipt. G2C10. What does the Q signal QRN mean? A. Send more slowly. B. I am troubled by static. C. Zero beat my signal. Or D. Stop sending. Correct answer is B. 
I am troubled by static. G2C11. What does EQ signal QRV mean? A. You are sending too fast. B. There is interference on the frequency. C. I am quitting for the day. Or D. I am ready to receive messages. Correct answer is D. I am ready to receive messages. G2D. Covering amateur auxiliary. Minimizing interference and HF operations. G2D01. What is the amateur auxiliary to the FCC? A. Amateur volunteers who are formally enlisted to monitor the airwaves for rule violations. B. Amateur volunteers who conduct amateur licensing examinations. C. Amateur volunteers who conduct frequency coordination for amateur VHF repeaters. Or D. Amateur volunteers who use their station equipment to help civil defense organizations in times of emergency. The correct answer is A. Amateur volunteers who are formally enlisted to monitor the airwaves for rules violations. G2D02. Which of the following are objectives of the amateur auxiliary? A. To conduct efficient and orderly amateur licensing exams. B. To encourage self-regulation and compliance with the rules by amateur radio operators. C. To coordinate repeaters for efficient and orderly spectrum use. Or D. To provide emergency and public safety communications. Correct answer is B. To encourage self-regulations and compliance with the rules by radio operators. G2D03. What skills learned during hidden transmitter hunts are of help to amateur auxiliaries? A. Identification of out-of-band operation. B. Direction finding used to locate stations violating FCC rules. C. Identification of different call signs. Or D. Hunters have an opportunity to transmit on non-amateur frequencies. Correct answer is B. Direction finding used to locate stations violating FCC rules. G2D04. Which of the following describes an azimuthal projection map? A. A map that shows accurate land masses. B. A map that shows true bearings and distances from a particular location. C. A map that shows the angle at which an amateur satellite crosses the equator. Or D. A map that shows the number of degrees longitude that an amateur satellite appears to move westward at the equator with each orbit. The correct answer is B. A map that shows true bearings and distances from a particular location. G2D05. When is it permissible to communicate with amateur stations in countries outside the areas administered by the Federal Communications Commission? A. Only when the foreign country has a formal third party agreement filed with the FCC. B. When the contact is with amateurs in any country except those whose administrations have notified the ITU that they object to such communications. C. When the contact is with amateurs in any country, as long as the communication is conducted in English. Or D. Only when the foreign country is a member of the International Amateur Radio Union. Correct answer is B. When the contact is with amateurs in any country except those whose administrations have notified the ITU that they object to such communications. G2D06. How is a directional antenna pointed when making a long path contact with another station? A. Toward the rising sun. B. Along the gray line. C. 180 degrees from its short path heading. Or D. Toward the north. Correct answer is C. 180 degrees from its short path heading. G2D07. Which of the following is required by the FCC rules when operating in the 60 meter band? A. If you are using other than a dipole antenna, you must keep a record of the gain of your antenna. B. You must keep a record of the date, time, frequency, power levels, and stations worked. C. You must keep a record of all third-party traffic. D. You must keep a record of the manufacturer of your equipment and the antenna used. The correct answer is A. If you are using other than a dipole antenna, you must keep a record of the gain of your antenna. G2D08. What is the reason why many amateurs keep a station log? A. The ITU requires a log of all international contacts. 
B. The ITU requires a log of all international third-party traffic. C. The log provides evidence of operation needed to renew a license without a retest. Or D. To help with a reply if the FCC requests information. Correct answer is D. To help with a reply if the FCC requests information. G2D09. What information is traditionally contained in a station log? A. Date and time of contact. B. Band and or frequency of the contact. C. Call sign of station contacted and the signal report given. D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. G2D10. What is QRP operation? A. Remote piloted model control. B. Low power transmit operation. C. Transmit using quick response protocol. Or D. Traffic relay procedure net operation. Correct answer is B. Low power transmit operation. G2D11. Which HF antenna would work best to minimize interference? A. A quarter wave vertical antenna. B. An isotropic antenna. C. A directional antenna. Or D. An omnidirectional antenna. Correct answer is C. A directional antenna. Going on, G2E, Digital Operating Procedures, Procedural Signals, and Common Abbreviations. G2E01, which mode is normally used when sending an RTTY signal via AFSK with a SSB transmitter? A. USB, B. DSB, C. CW, or D. LSB? Correct answer is D. Lower Sideband, LSB. G2E02. How can a packdoor modem or controller be used to determine if the channel is in use by other packdoor stations? A. Unplug the data connector temporarily and see if the channel busy indication is turned off. B. Put the modem or controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without a connection. C. Transmit UI packets several times and wait to see if there is a response from another packdoor station. Or D, send the message, is this frequency in use? Correct answer is B, put the modem or controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without a connection. G2E03, what symptoms may result from other signals interfering with a packtor or wind more transmission? A, frequent retries or timeouts. B, long pauses in message transmission. C, failure to establish a connection between stations. Or D, all of these choices are correct. And the correct answer is D, all of these choices are correct. G204, what segment of the 20 meter band is most often used for digital transmissions? A, 14.0 to 14.050 megahertz. B, 14.070 to 14.100 megahertz. C, 14.150 megahertz to 14.225 megahertz or d 14.275 to 14.350 megahertz correct answer is b 14.070 megahertz to 14.100 megahertz g2e05 what is the standard sideband used to generate a jt65 or jt9 digital signal when using AFSK in any amateur band? A. Lower sideband. B. Upper sideband. C. DSB. Or D. SSB. Correct answer is B. Upper sideband. USB. G2E06. What is the most common frequency shift for RTTY emissions in the amateur HF bands? A. 85 hertz. B. 170 hertz. C. 425 hertz or D 850 hertz? Correct answer is B 170 hertz. G2 E07. What segment of the 80 meter band is most commonly used for digital transmissions? A 3570 to 3600 kilohertz. B 3500 to 3525 kilohertz. C 3700 to 3750 kilohertz. Or D, 3775 to 3825 kilohertz. Correct answer is A, 3570 to 3600 kilohertz.
kilohertz. G2E08, what segment of the 20 meter band are most PSK31 operations commonly found? A, at the bottom of the slow scan TV segment near 14.230 megahertz. B, at the top of the SSB phone segment near 14.325 megahertz. C, in the middle of the CW segment near 14.100 megahertz. Or D, below the RTTY segment near 14.070 megahertz. Correct answer is D, below the RTTY segment near 14.070 megahertz. G2E09, how do you join a contact between two stations using the PACTOR protocol? A. Send broadcast packets containing your call sign while in monitor mode. B. Transmit a steady carrier until the PACTOR protocol times out and disconnects. C. Joining an existing contact is not possible. PACTOR connections are limited to two stations. Or D. Send a NAC response continuously so that the sending station has to pause. Correct answer is C. Joining an existing contact is not possible. Pactor connections are limited to two stations. G2E10. Which of the following is a way to establish contact with a digital messaging system gateway station? A. Send an email to the system control operator. B. Send QRL in Morse code. C. Respond when the station broadcasts its SSID. Or D. Transmit a connect message on the station's public published frequency. Correct answer is D. Transmit a connect message on the station's published frequency. G2E11. What is indicated on the waterfall display by one or more vertical lines adjacent to a PSK31 signal? A. Long path propagation. B. Backscatter propagation. C. Insufficient modulation. Or D. Over modulation. The correct answer is D, over modulation. G2E12. Which of the following describes a waterfall display? A frequency is horizontal, signal strength is vertical, and time is intensity. B. Frequency is vertical, signal strength is intensity, and time is horizontal. C. Frequency is horizontal, signal strength is intensity, and time is vertical. Or D. Frequency is vertical, signal strength is horizontal, and time is intensity. Correct answer is C. Frequency is horizontal, signal strength is intensity, and then time is vertical. G2E13. Which communication system sometimes uses the internet to transfer messages? A. Winlink. B. RTTY. C. Aries. Or D. Skywarn. Correct answer is A. Winlink. G2E14. What could be wrong if you cannot decode an RTTY or other FSK signal even though it is apparently tuned in properly? A. The mark and space frequencies may be reversed. B. You may have selected the wrong baud rate. C. You may be listening on the wrong sideband. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. Next element. Sub-element G3. G3 covers radio wave propagation. Three exam questions come from the three groups located in sub-element G3. First off, G3A, covering sunspots and solar radiation, ionospheric disturbances, propagation forecasting, and indices. G3A01, what is the significance of the sunspot number with regard to HF propagation? A. Higher sunspot numbers generally indicate a greater probability of good propagation at higher frequencies. B. Lower sunspot numbers indicate greater probability of sporadic E propagation. C. A zero sunspot number indicates radio propagation is not possible on any band. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is A. A higher sunspot numbers generally indicate a greater probability of good propagation at higher frequencies. G3A02. What effect does the sudden ionic spheric disturbance have on the daytime ionospheric propagation of HF radio waves? A. It enhances propagation on all HF frequencies. B. It disrupts signals on lower frequencies more than those on higher frequencies. 
C. It disrupts communications via satellite more than direct communications. Or D. None, because only areas on the night side of the Earth are affected. And the correct answer is B. It disrupts signals on lower frequencies more than those on higher frequencies. G3A03, approximately how long does it take the increased ultraviolet and X-ray radiation from solar flares to affect radio propagation on the Earth? A, 28 days, B, 1 to 2 hours, C, 8 minutes, or D, 20 to 40 hours? Correct answer is D, 20 to 40 hours. G3A04, which of the following are least reliable for long-distance communications during periods of low solar activity? A, 80 meters and 160 meters, B, 60 meters and 40 meters, C, 30 meters and 20 meters, or D, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters? Correct answer is D, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. G3A05, what is the solar flux index? A, a measure of the highest frequency that is useful for ionospheric propagation between two points on the Earth. B, a count of sunspots, which is adjusted for solar emissions. C, another name for the American sunspot number. Or D, a measure of solar radiation at 10.7 centimeters wavelength. The correct answer is D, a measure of solar radiation at 10.7 centimeters wavelength. G3A06, what is a geomagnetic storm? A, a sudden drop in the solar flux index. B, a thunderstorm which affects radio propagation. C, ripples in the ionosphere. Or D, a temporary disturbance in the Earth's magnetosphere. Correct answer is D, a temporary disturbance in the Earth's magnetosphere. G3A07, at what point in the solar cycle does the 20 meter band usually support worldwide propagation during daylight hours? A, at the summer solstice. B, only at the minimum point of the solar cycle. C, only at the minimum point of the solar cycle. Or D, at any point in the solar cycle. Correct answer is D, at any point in the solar cycle. G3A08, which of the following effects can a geomagnetic storm have on radio propagation? A. Improved high latitude HF propagation. B. Degraded high latitude HF propagation. C. Improved ground wave propagation. Or D. Improved chances of UHF ducting. Correct answer is B. Degraded high latitude HF propagation. G3A09, what effect does high sunspot number have on radio communications? A. High frequency radio signals become weak and distorted. B. Frequencies above 300 MHz become usable for long distance communication. C. Long distance communication in the upper HF and lower VHF range is enhanced. Or D. Microwave communication becomes unstable. Correct answer is C. Long distance communication in the upper HF and lower VHF range is enhanced. G3A10, what comes what causes HF propagation conditions to vary periodically in a 28-day cycle? A. Long-term oscillations in the upper atmosphere. B. Cyclic variations in the Earth's radiation belts. C. The sun's rotation on its axis. Or D. The position of the moon in its orbit. Correct answer is C, the sun's rotation on its axis. G3A11, approximately how long is the typical sunspot cycle? A, 8 minutes, B, 40 hours, C, 28 days, or D, 11 years. Correct answer is D, 11 years. G3A12, what does the K index indicate? A, the relative position of sunspots on the Earth's surface of the relative position of sunspots on the surface of the sun b the short term stability of the earth's magnetic field c the stability of the sun's magnetic field or d the solar flux at boulder colorado correct answer is b the short term stability of the earth's magnetic field g3a13 what does the a index indicate a the relative position of sunspots on the surface of the sun. B. The amount of polarization 
of the sun's electric field. C. The long-term stability of the Earth's geomagnetic field. Or D. The solar radio flux at Boulder, Colorado. Correct answer is C. The long-term stability of the Earth's geomagnetic field. G3A14. How are radio communications usually affected by charged particles that reach the Earth from solar coronal holes? A. HF communications are improved. B. HF communications are disturbed. C. VHF and UHF ducting is improved. D. VHF and UHF ducting is disturbed. Correct answer is B. HF communications are disturbed. G3A15. How long does it take charged particles from coronal mass ejections to affect radio propagation on the Earth? A. 28 days. B. 14 days. C. 4 to 8 minutes. Or D. 20 to 40 hours. Correct answer is D. 20 to 40 hours. G3A16. What is a possible benefit to radio communications resulting from periods of high geomagnetic activity? A. Auroras that can reflect VHF signals. B. Higher signal strength for HF signals passing through the polar regions. C. Improved HF long path propagation. D. Reduced long delayed echoes. Correct answer is A. Auroras can reflect VHF signals. Alright, and that is the conclusion of segment number three of this series. I would encourage you, if you have not subscribed, to please subscribe to the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club YouTube channel so you're notified of future videos as we release those.